good morning, afternoon, or night. Welcome to the Clockwork Orange podcast. It's nice to have you with us today. Really appreciate a like, subscribe, doing uh, doing G's work. G be easy. Easy peasy, baby. So tonight, I'm going to be talking about big dick energy and what that means what it means sip that down sip it down think for a minute could be a lot of things could be a lot of things ultimately where that resonates for me is in my youth where my head always been bound to certain certain values and principles that I hold dear to myself and I've always been true to those so early in my life I tended to be defined more as a nerd by people who really knew me that's that's what you would say about me pretty nerdy now, nerd, dork, those things could be interchangeable, but they're also quite different in some cultures. So I would just like to define the fact that a nerd, as opposed to a dork, at least in my lingo and in New York, where I grew up with the people I associated with, a nerd was always somebody more intellectually focused and kind of head in the books or very game oriented like video game oriented you were on the computer stuff like that could start to edge into the dork category where you were a little too obsessed with those things and therefore they came out in a very in a very socially awkward fashion to the point where you know like a dork and that's usually the kid with the glasses like pulled up or like all the way to his face, they're like too big. I don't know. He he looks he looks like a dork, man. You know what I mean? He's got overalls on. He's he's out of place. He's out of place. He's he's like the kid that in public school was like wearing a business suit. His parents put him in a suit to go to school. Either that or the kid that was in overalls with like dirt on his sneakers. They were like making the kid work the the backyard. We don't even got farms over here. So what were you making that kid do before he came into school covered in dirt? <laughs> You know, so uh, hygiene, there's a lot of other issues, man. There's people, I, I could go off on a tangent. <laughs> you got kids in public school fucking urinating at a urinal with the pants down, man. The pants down. I don't know what's going on in the household. That type of stuff goes on. And I don't mean to offend anybody who might be still here with us today that actually did that at one point. God bless you. So anyway... I tend to get sidetracked, so thank God, you know, I got a major topic here. Otherwise, we we could be going off on a tangent. Big dick energy. So, now, where that comes back, might go off track here. This is like shotgun spread. That's what you're going to get with this podcast. It's going to be a shotgun spread. We're going to try and stay on topic here. (laughs) Good luck. God bless me and the listeners here. I really appreciate your patience. So anyway, big dick energy really resonated for me back when I was a youngin. Not because I exhibited it. At least I did not put an effort into this. I was always very physically active. So at least that helped to not have me be a giant ball. But that nerd energy, it pretty much carried me throughout my whole life. And it still does. To this day absolutely that's a defining characteristic of me but as well if you don't know me too too well i'm very sociable i'm very what you would consider uh just a normal person for the most part but i always stood for those values and principles and they always tended to throw me in the line of fire in a very i guess manly type of way where, you know, I might stick up for somebody who 
I didn't even know. I might, you know, jump in the defense of, of somebody who uh, might have been in the right with a teacher who, uh, you know, I, I had evidence to the fact that he uh, was not, in fact, going to go copy his homework. He was just grabbing a textbook. So anyway, I would always put myself in the line of fire and I always tended to speak up when, you know, probably other people were biting their tongue. So I tended to stick out in some way because of that. But it's not like I was doing it for attention, only in the comedic sense. I was a class clown and it's kind of strange because I was always kind of the quiet one and everything. So it was like this real weird juxtaposition kind of created a bit of mystery having, you know, somebody who's quiet all the time and stuff like that kind of speak up, be a funny guy and, you know, randomly kind of uh, tell the history teacher he's wrong and, and you know, you can't be talking about politics and stuff and it's certain your opinion here. We're talking about, about facts and history. Let's not get the two mixed up. You know, we're not looking for opinion pieces here. This is This is empirical evidence and knowledge we're trying to spread. We're not trying to to twist people this early so anyway that was my thinking i you know i i really stood for those things and uh not knowing it you know that's the thing that's why you got to stand for something right because indirectly you're going to create some 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 type of character that other people might admire and um yeah you know it it, it can do a lot can do a lot for you having that having that type of energy in some form you know whether it just be confidence you you, you could be a totally glorified nerd and and really wear that on your sleeve socially and stuff that's fine it's just it's really about how you carry yourself and really bringing confidence to the to the game it's not just a, a consolement from mom that if you're confident that that'll carry you toward a toward a healthy engagement with a woman it's just a certainty with almost anything i mean how can you approach things cautiously and uh really reluctant cautious is one thing but reluctant you know and and not willing or or wanting to engage in the behavior you're about to it's like you know that's a sign you probably shouldn't when your body everything is telling you that when you can convince your mind of something like that and throw yourself into it physically where you're not ready it, there's quite amazing feats that can be pulled off in those situations you know some people might fail of course but that's really where some people shine you know back people into a corner some people you have no idea what they're capable of and they might not even know some people you know they have that they have those traits have those traits we all got some very interesting traits but you know having a bit of concerted big dick energy you know it shouldn't be wielded like a uh, a flashy thing to, to swing around especially when you have it <laughs> especially when you got that bad boy you know it's just it takes away from you it takes away from you how many guys you know with a big dick that actually got some fucking character, bro? Come on. Come on. I'm just kidding. I know plenty of them. But the point is, is that, that that's probably gonna... <laughs> it's probably gonna, like, take away from something. You know what I mean? You're, you're counting on that. It's a crutch. My, maybe even literally for some people. You know, sometimes certain position, you might just be fucking leaning up on that bad boy. Five years later, you got a little bit of bend in that thing. You know, you're pissing to the fucking left. <laughs> but it's a crutch. And no matter what, no matter what, you know, it's, it's, everything has an equal and opposite reaction. Where, where that distributes and, and where, what category it falls into. But we got our whole selves another problem here. But down the line down the line There's, there is a line that needs to be drawn you know sometimes we got to put that line and it's not in the sand you cannot draw that in the sand because you know life's a little bit unstable that line you can forget about that line you're gonna keep 
drawn it further back, further forward, a little left, right, a little slanted. Find some ways to cut a few corners off that bad boy. So you you really gotta you gotta commit to things. You gotta have confidence when you're about to execute. You know you really need to develop <clears throat> those plans. The, the earlier, the better. You know, I think a lot of people make that mistake, misjudgment. But then again, you know who who's really of sound mind up until like thirty years old. Even then, at no point, no point. If, if you're a real aspiring human being, at no point should you rightfully say, I've learned enough. There's just, there's so many perspectives that you could, you could live this life and many other lives through. And especially nowadays with all the connected, connected uh, intrawebs, you know? We got the mycelial network below our feet. We got the ether webs going on. You know, we're all connected. It's just like you can't escape nature in that way. And that uh, that big dick energy, man, it's in nature. It's an ancient proving grounds. You'll find someone or something of meaning when you have some integrity or something that you stand for. And then you throw yourself at the opportunities that present themselves to you as a form of discovery. There's all the different types of experiences and really at some point in your life you, you have to decide that the only way you're going to grow is by just throwing yourself at the elements. You know, one step at a time it makes our footing better for us to work from. We can really build a foundation. And, and you know, just that, that one bit of progress, it helps us at least solidify things that work, worked, things that didn't work. You know, we can eliminate and, and continue to move forward with, the, with just a little bit of stability to be able to finish that next, the next form of that footing that you need to get you could start chiseling away at that and that's big that's a big step for a lot of people you know you really do you have to compare yourself to who you were yesterday that was said by a great man jordan peterson which he is also uh, a beacon of light to those who are uh, overwhelmed by darkness i would highly advise that but you know that 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 thing about nature you know it, it brings us to today where you know we're, we're kind of escaping that we're trying to get away from nature in a lot of ways and and you know we bring a lot of innovation and and new tricks and new tricks we can kind of mold everything around us to kind of be temperate and then nice and and uh, approachable for us humans, desirable characteristics. And, you know, it's just, it tends to pollute things. It corrupts. It corrupts because not only do we corrupt ourselves, but that really starts to, to influence society. You know, it's not only those smokestacks and all that industrial pollution and everything else going on. It's, it's more a problem that the human mind, the, the psychological wherewithal, the thought process, the, the unconscious behavior that just contributes to that, you know? And, and, and the problem is not the common man. I'll tell you that right now. It's definitely not. It's the, we're not the ones that are using up the water supply and uh, drying out California. It's not. I went to the Dominican Republic. My wife's from there. It's a place surrounded by salt water. There's very little fresh water on that island. But you know what? They use desalination. It's a process that's been around for good God. It's the earliest form of creating fresh water and uh, we just fail to use it. We fail to use it especially in California where they need it the most.
So it's just strange. It goes to show you that the, the real dwindling of society does not come from the, uh, the physical, tangible effects. Ultimately, that comes from a culmination in the mind that had to, to actually physically coalesce in some way, you know? That didn't just take place. It's not a whole bunch of people burning campfires trying to survive anymore. This is conscious behavior that's that's dictating you know where we're going in the future and it's just silly and you think that donating to a charity doesn't really do as much as it should well then imagine donating to a political cause like global warming which has now been basically turned into climate change which you cannot deny climate change that's just a scientific fact and it's a natural fact. It's been happening, you know, it's just a natural law. The climate changes. There are changes that are involved in that. But, you know, anyway, that's a whole, that's a whole different Spielberg, you know. But I appreciate you listening. If you enjoyed this, please take the time to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. We'll be here with another podcast very shortly.